Hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Here we're going to start the balance and well-being talk. Thank you, Future Works, for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you talking for these 15 minutes. Uh, my name is Maggie João, as you uh, all know. I was born in South Africa, but bred in Portugal. And I have a career, international career, from the engineering world, let's put it this way, as I studied in two universities, uh, Technico, the Lisbon University of uh, Engineering, one of the top known, and then another one from Sweden, Chalmers in Gothenburg. So the Swedish mafia here, uh, you will know uh, where this uh, is located. And then the other half of my career has been in the coaching world, in the training, leadership development, and so on. So today, I'm going to talk to you about balance and well-being. I've written a few books about coaching, and this session is going to be a little bit more interactive, so I'm going to pose you a few questions. So, the, the topic that I'm bringing you is a concept. It's about the multiple intelligence. This concept was first coined by Howard Gardner, an American psychologist, that said, actually, we don't have only one intelligence, we have more. He identified nine intelligences. So we're talking about musical intelligence, math intelligence, spatial intelligence. And then Stephen Covey, who knows Stephen Covey here? Excellent. Stephen Covey is a guru, or was a guru of leadership, and he wrote that book that many of you might have known, or have heard about, um, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And this is definitely one of the books for you to read. And he said, you know what? This multiple intel intelligence concept is quite interesting. And it's interesting from a leadership perspective. What, from these nine intelligence, what are the intelligence that are really important for the balance of the leader? So which ones do you think it is? He picked only four. Who wants to say a few of those? Come on. It's almost noon. Emotional intelligence, well done. What else? I cannot hear. Influence is in all of them. Listening is more on the emotional intelligence, but is, uh, is also included. So the first one is physical intelligence. Okay? And actually, this one is, uh, is in Portuguese, but I'll translate for you. Physical intelligence is something that is about my body. We live in this temple for as many years as we are on Earth, right? So, we need to treat this body very well, understand how it speaks to us. It's not only about exercising, and it's not only about um, sleeping well, sleeping patterns, or health and nutrition. It's also understanding how does the body communicate with me, especially when I'm facing different emotions. And then it comes emotional intelligence that uh, one of you has already mentioned. And you have here this part. You probably know this Disney movie, Inside Out, that was a cartoon, a movie for kids, but it's actually for adults as well. So it talks about a lot about our emotions and how can we learn from them. So emotional intelligence has five big pillars. It has our em empathy, empathy for others, social skills, but also has self-motivation, self-awareness, and self-regulation. How do I regulate my emotions? So it is the, cap the capability of understanding and recognizing my emotions, but also of, of others. And, and the father of emotional intelligence was actually Myers, also an American. But the stepfather, let's put it, the biological father was Myers. The stepfather, as you probably know, was Daniel Goleman, who brought this emotional intelligence to the management world and leadership. And then the next one is spiritual intelligence. So spiritual intelligence doesn't have anything to do with religion. A person might not even have a religion and be spiritual. Spiritual intelligence is where we include the me time, where we include the reflection time, ponderation, is, is how we give back. How we give back. I mean, we are receiving all these great situations. We have learnings from university, from our parents, from the, that great teacher that I admire in university, or the school teacher, 
or a mentor. How are we giving this back? And some of this, yes, it is voluntary work, but something else might be something else. So it's, it's a lot about our internal harmony. So the next one, is that if we don't have, and I'm not going to talk about the next one, next uh, intelligence right now, but if we don't have this spiritual intelligence, something happens. And you know what happens? Shit happens. Sorry about my French, <laughs> okay? But it happens because I didn't give myself reflection time. Do you know hamsters and the hamster's wheel? <laughs> See, that's what happens. If we don't stop, if we don't make a pause in our life, game of life, of our lives, this is what happens. So what we're inviting you is to shift, is to make the shift, is to really understand what makes me happy, what really makes me getting up with a smile on my face. And I can tell you my story. I mean, I was working and I had a fantastic career, very well paid, international career. I lived in 12 countries, for your information, all of them great. Uh, but I decided to come back to Portugal for a reason, right? And after, after these 12 years abroad, I said, you know what? I'm, I'm just, this, this is all of the same. I am that little hamster. hamster. I, I need to do a shift to, to, to um, reflect the internal values that I have, to honor them. And then I decided to take... Um, uh, a big shift, I'll tell you. I was living in London at the time, uh, probably some of you have been to London, and London has this beautiful park that's called Hyde Park that separates the north from the south. And a friend of mine was having what he called a coaching open day in an hotel in the north of London. And then he said, well, why can't you come and, and assist me? So it was a full day in a hotel, just about what do you want from life, from life, how can you change things, and so on. And then there I was, and I felt on, on the way back home, I was crossing that Hyde Park, and I, I asked my question, the question to me, Maggie, what do you want from life? And you know what? The answer come, came immediately. And, and my answer, you're going to laugh, because my answer was, I want to live in front of the ocean. So I even pondered to move to Australia. But then I said, no, maybe, maybe I, I go back to Portugal. That's beautiful. This happened on the 8th of March, 2010. 12th of March, my sister's birthday is on the 11th, so I, I had anyway a flight to here <laughs> to come to Portugal to have dinner with her. And then on the 12th, I rented a flat in Cascais, which is a very nice fisherman village, very close to Lisbon. For the ones that haven't been there, please don't go because it's, it's beautiful. So that's uh, action for me. I thought, I, 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 I understood that's the way, and I shifted. Okay? So the other one, it's rational intelligence or mental intelligence, is what we call the IQ. And here the IQ is what we have been trained for in terms of troubleshooting, data um, analysis, problem solving, you know, all these things. And in this one, which is normally the one that we believe is our intelligence, but as you see, we have multiple. In this one, we have something interesting. And, and this comes from these pictures that I'm going to show you. What do you see from this one? Hmm? Who sees a rabbit? Who else sees some, who, so, so something else? A seagull, a bird. Excellent, yeah? And sometimes one came for, first than the other, faster than the other. What about this one? What do you see there? A bear? Well, that's new to me. What do you see? What is this? This is what? Snow, right? And what about this? A dog. Excellent. A dog. And? A man running. Excellent. Okay, okay. What about this one? This one is easy. A face. An Indian face, yeah? And then, here, maybe an elbow, feet. It's an Eskimo, I mean, we say it's an Eskimo, 
going inside a room or something like that where it's a little bit dark. So as you see, we have this view, this holistic view, this systemic view. That is what we want you to have, the leader to have, not to fall, funnel in, in a, a, one, of the, one of the intelligence, but open up and understand. And you know what? This next picture, who is right? Both are right. It's a question of perspective. And you know what? In life, seldom things are black and white. Some of them are, and that's true, but there is a gray of, of uh, a shade of gray, right? And in this shade of gray, the leader needs to have this balance, needs to have this helicopter view. And you, as, as leaders and as future leaders, you need to be, have this holistic approach. Because if you don't have, what happens is that we, we get into that mindset of me versus them, or us versus them, or that binary mentality of uh, A or B, what about A and B? So the future leader, the balanced leader, is that one that taps into the collective intelligence. Says, okay, well, I see the rabbit. What do you see? Tell me, what else can we, we do here from, on this situation, on this issue? So I have two, two quotes here that I believe they are fantastic. Halvin Toffler is an American author that says, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be the ones who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that is the invitation, is for you to unlearn what sometimes we have learned for ages and ages and ages, and relearn something else, rewire. Rewire in terms of jobs to make you happy, in terms of or maybe even families that make you happy, okay? And the, na the next quote is also from um, an author, a Portuguese one, and it's, it's about there is a time when it comes, becomes necessary to abandon the used clothes, which already have the shape of our body, and to forget our path, which takes us always to the same places. This is the time to cross the river, and if we do not dare to do so, we will have stayed forever beneath our, ourselves. So, in Portuguese, for the ones that understand Portuguese, look out for, in Google for, for this, because it's a really nice uh, words in Portuguese. But what this says, basically, is, is that understanding, let's try something else, not just always the same way to work, not always starting the meetings the same way. Let's balance it out. If I do this type of sports, let me do this thing. If I do this type of food for dinner for my family, let me try something else. Balance it out. And then, I'm, 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 uh, if there is one thing that I would like you to take from this talk, is everything starts with you. It's us, in the sense. I know it sounds very egocentric, <laughs> okay? But if I am not well, my kids are not going to be well. My husband is not going to be well. My my direct reports, people around me. So it all starts with us, with our attitude, with our smiles. I mean, a smile is a fantastic tool, and by the way, it's for free. Just sitting down and smiling in a meeting might melt the coldest uh, heart. And here is an exercise for you, pen and paper. So if you had one wish, what would you wish for in terms of balance and well-being? Think it through, write it down, and now a few things. Make it happen, really, make it happen. It might not be this week, might not be next week, etc. but make it happen. Be happy while doing so. Make the world around you also happy, and above all, make it count, okay? If you want, you can even evaluate yourself in those for um, intelligence. How am I? What is my score? I know it's a self-evaluation, but what is my score from 1 to 10 in physical intelligence, in emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, and then in rational intelligence? Okay? So I leave you with my contacts. It's more than welcome for you to drop me an email and a WhatsApp 
you know, we can go for coffee or virtual coffee. And, and I really like this quote, never stop learning because life never stops teaching. Thank you very much.